Let's talk about evaluating functions. In other words, let's suppose that we're given a function, you know, a mathematical formula for a rule of correspondence, and we want to put in some values of x, and it spit out values of uh, the function. So, in other words, let's suppose we have something like this. We have f of x equals x squared. And we, just some vocabulary here. This part over here, the output, we call this the dependent variable. And what does it depend on? Well, it depends upon x. And x is the independent variable. So, x represents values of the domain, and f of x represents values of the range. Now, sometimes what we'll do is, instead of writing f of x equals x squared, we'll write y equals x squared. Now, this way, if we write it this way, f of x, it's a little bit easier to talk about evaluating the function of a particular value. Like, we can talk about f of 2 and f of 3 and so forth. Whereas if we have y equals x squared, we would have to say, you know, y equals x squared where x equals or something like that. So a lot of times this is easier for us to use. So we'll use f of x equals x squared. But in either case, f of x, y, they're both, we refer to those as the dependent variables. So let's see how this works. Let's suppose we have f of x equals x squared and we want to find f of 2. Well, what we do to evaluate that is we go ahead and put in the value. We leave a blank where the x is over here, and I'll put in a 2 in this case, and then just do the mathematical operation there. So we get f of 2 is equal to 4. Now, we could, uh, we could talk about this this way. We've got f of 2 equals 4. Sometimes we'll represent these as ordered pairs, and we'll have the input as the x here, 2, and the output, 4. So we have this point, 2, 4. So let's do it with negative 2. So we have f of negative 2. Put in the negative 2. A negative number squared gives you a positive. So, so now we have this point, negative 2, 4. But when we talk about evaluating functions, this is what we're talking about. We put in an input, and then we do the mathematics that the function dictates, and we get the output. So, and it's not just numerical values that we can plug into the function. We can plug in whatever it tells us as long as, as long as it's not going to make the function undefined. In other words, as long as it's consistent with, with what's allowed in our function. And we'll talk, that would be a future video. But let's suppose that we have f of x equals x squared plus 3x. And we want to find f of 2 plus h. Well... I'm just going to rewrite the function, but instead of putting an x, I'll leave a blank. See? A blank where the x is. And then I put in the 2 plus h. Then all I need to do is the, you know, multiplying things out. I multiply 2 plus h squared out, and I get this. See? 2 plus h times 2 plus h. And maybe you think of that as foiling, but you would foil that out. And then over here... We've got this where I just distribute through. Okay. And then the last thing we do is add like terms. 6 and 4 is 10. 4 and 3. Add the h's and you get 7. And then you have this lone 8 squared there. But the, the point is you can evaluate this function at other things besides just numbers. So, for example, we could say, okay, if f of x equals x squared plus 3x, what does f of negative x equal? Well, let's see here. Let's leave a blank where the x was and put in the negative x and then just work it out. Negative x squared, well, if you square a negative, you're going to get a positive. And then over here, a positive 3 times a negative x will give you a negative 3x. So here's that result. And then we've got f of 4x. Well, let's see what that's going to be. Leave a blank where the x goes. Put in the 4x. 4x squared is going to be 16x squared plus 12x. So there, so we've evaluated this function. Now, let's think about uh, piecewise functions. 
because sometimes we have to evaluate those. So what a, a piecewise function comes about with a situation like this. Let's suppose you take a job where you make $10 an hour if you work between zero and 40 hours. And if you work more than 40 hours, every hour above 40, you get time and a half. In other words, you'll make not $10, but $15 per hour. So in other words, things change after you work 40 hours. So the rule changes a little bit. So what you have is you have f of x equals 10x if you work between 0 and 40 hours. Or, you know, that's the rule for your pay. Or if you work more than 40 hours, here's the rule. Now let me explain this. This 400, that comes from the $400 you made from working 40 hours. Okay? So you get that money. So if you're talking about how much you're going to get paid, well, if you work more than 40 hours, you certainly get $400 for the first 40 hours, 10 times uh, 40. But then every hour over 40, you get $15. So that's what this represents, X minus 40, where X is the number of hours you work. So, for example, if you work 42 hours, you would have 400 plus 15 times 2 for the two hours you work above 40. So this is called a piecewise function because the rule changes if you work as soon as you work more than 40 hours. So we combine it as one rule. Okay, so let's see how this will work. Let's suppose that we have this rule, this, this function here, and let's suppose we work 35 hours. Well, that is definitely between 0 and 40, so we would use this rule right here, 10x. So I just multiply 10 times 35, and I get this. 35 hours corresponds to $350. Now, let's suppose that we work 42 hours. Well, 42 hours, the, the number of hours is definitely above 40, so we would use this rule right here. So 40, 400 plus 15 times 2 and we get $430. So that would be our pay if we work 42 hours. And we have this ordered pair here. 42 comma 430. So let's look at uh, another example. You don't, these piecewise functions don't have to just have two parts. They can have more than two parts. There's no limit to how many parts they can have. Look at this one. This is f of x equals negative x as long as x is less than negative 2. f of x equals 7, as long as x is between negative 2 and 2, inclusive. And f of x equals x, as long as x is bigger than 2. So we've got the number line kind of divided into three parts. Everything less than 2, negative 2, everything greater than 2, and everything between negative 2 and 2, inclusive. Notice I don't have the little line here. This is just x strictly less than negative 2. So let's see how this works. f of negative 5. Well, let's look over here and see which category that is. That's definitely this first category, right? Okay, so I'm going to put in negative 5 in for x. I've got a negative in front already. So that gives me negative 5, 5. Now let's look at this one, f of 5. Well, that's down in this category. So f of 5 is just 5, and we get 5, 5. Now, let's suppose we've got f of negative 1. Ah, that's definitely this category right here because, because negative 1 is between negative 2 and 2, so that would just be a flat-out 7. No calculations required on that one. Okay, now what about f of negative 2? Ah, now notice this is x is less than negative 2. We go down here where x can actually equal negative 2, so that's going to be 7. And we get this point, negative 2, 7. And there we have evaluating a piecewise function.